Okay, Itamex Kanatani, good morning. It is Friday, August 17th, 2018, in the first part of the lunar cycle, Bakipists Otsidatespi. And I'm getting my morning rounds started a bit late. <laughs> it's about quarter after nine. Um, didn't get any skunk notifications till about 8.30, and now we've got two to go fetch. Uh, the first one is going to be down here at the Bridge VRV Resort, where we've been pulling for the last week or so. And then uh, the second one is at a Northside residence that I just set up yesterday. So we're going to go get those two animals, um, bring them to Alexander Wilderness Park, and then we'll, we'll see where the day takes us. This is a bigger skunk. This is a bit bigger skunk. Yeah, this might be Mama. Yeah, it's a fat skunk. Hey there, skunky. Oh, I know. I surprised you, huh? Didn't think anybody was walking up on you. Oh, you're a pretty good sized skunky. Are you mama? You're kind of fat. Kind of fat. Oh, I know. You're mad. You have every right to be mad. Guys, ready to take off. There you go. It's going out the door. Next. couple of husky adult skunks this time around. Just out here in the Riverstone Coolies, it's about a quarter past 11 and I actually came out here because I wanted to check out part of the neighborhood back here. Uh, Stonecrest Point, there's, there's an empty lot along that strip where for the past three years there's been sightings of neonate rattlesnakes newborns. A um, couple of years back when it started I found newborns in the backyard of a house. It was a cold day, kind of rainy, and uh, there was a couple of newborns on somebody's back um, deck, concrete deck, and they were cold so I picked them up and brought them to one of the rookeries that I know of out here in the coolies and, and released them. But it means that there's a rookery up there, that area, and I thought it might be in that guy's yard. We checked around and I didn't find one. So I assume maybe the, the vacant lot behind his house. And did a thorough check of the vacant lot, found nothing. Um, then the following year, there was another neonate that came out onto the sidewalk by the, by the vacant lot. Um, so again, did a, did a check of that lot, found nothing. Then yesterday, one of the neighbors there, um, one of the guys that's just adjacent to that lot, 
he said he saw his cat had something in its mouth and it dropped it and when it dropped it the thing slithered away and he was sure it was a snake of some kind a very small snake and he wondered if that could be a neonate and I was like well they have been born <laughs> some of them anyway um, have been born so it's it's a possibility and it's a pretty strong possibility given you know what we've seen of the snakes being born on that lot the last couple of years so did a ch another check of that area this morning um, and I'm still not finding anything I went into even one of the residences backyards there and um, not not finding anything so I don't know one of these days somebody's gonna stumble upon that rookery that's over there for now though I thought I'd come down and, and check on some of the other rookeries the ones out here in the coolies and see whether there's any baby snakes around okay got a really cool situation here I've got mama rattlesnake here at one of the dens, den entrances, and she actually has in the shadows behind her some neonates. I think she has uh, left the rookery, come over to the den entrance, and some of the neonates have followed, but there's still others, and I see them as well. And they're right over here. It's kind of a big pile of them here. In this, in this hole that goes into one of the rookeries. And I think they're gonna be making their way over to the den as the day goes along. Oh, there's a, there's a little neonate right beside her. I don't know if you see that. This one right back in here and it's got a fat little lump in its body. It's always been a kind of a mystery whether or not the neonates even eat before they go into the brumation. But this one's fat lump tells me that they do. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a whole pile of neonates here for sure. So, more confirmation that the, uh, the birthing is underway, well underway. Man, I forgot how much I enjoyed hiking these Riverstone Coolies. Look around here and a lot of what I see is pretty unblemished short grass prairie species. And I used to enjoy uh, hiking out here pretty often when I lived in this neighborhood. You know, before I got evicted for... <laughs> for having... drawing too much wildlife attention to my home. Um, I'd wake up in the mornings and there'd be flocks of gulls and crows and magpies and stuff just waiting for me to step out of the house. And the neighbors didn't like that. So it was a rental place and ultimately they pushed me out. And that's cool because I bought my own house and then um, now, you know, I can feed birds if I want to. <laughs> that kind of thing but yeah I used to walk these coolies quite a bit and I knew where everything was I knew where the coyote dens were I knew where the rattlesnake dens and stuff were and speaking of the latter what I'm seeing out here this afternoon is that that mama rattlesnake back at the artificial den and rookery in Cottonwood Park that I first looked at a couple of days ago to see if she had babies she's late in her delivery compared to these other snakes you know the the snakes and pops and yesterday we saw had their neonates at least some of them um, over here at the northern riverstone den we just stopped in there and they have their babies and then i took a i took a look at another rookery that i know a little bit more south into riverstone here and uh, they had babies too in fact i set a i set a camera there so you could take a look I think mama made a, a big appearance
now about one o'clock in the afternoon and I'm here at uh, this client's place. Remember she had been experiencing skunks somehow getting under her house for uh, and, and spraying in the middle of the night. So I had a trap set here for a little while, a few weeks, and caught a couple of skunks um, over here by her shed. And then <clears throat> found an area in the back of her house where probably uh, the skunks were actually getting underneath. You know, for, for a while there I started to wonder uh, whether, <laughs> whether or not, you know, she, she was really like, these skunks were really here in the middle of the night. And I guess her sons and stuff were wondering the same, but um, they were here. And uh, we got a couple of them out. Now, her brother, she's gone away on vacation, but uh, her brother messaged me, uh, phoned me just about 15 minutes ago and let me know that um, we got another skunk. She wanted me to come pick up the trap and I thought she had closed it up. So I didn't think I had to, this is kind of out of the way for me and I was waiting for a good time when I'd be swinging through the area before I picked it up. But um, yeah, her brother says there's a skunky skunky. Hey buddy. Oh, I know. Now I guess the client he has had uh, some professionals come and fix up, you know, the bottom of her house here so that it's so that they can't get in there anymore but I don't know but you are the last skunk to leave the premises oh I know I know you're mad but I'm your ticket to freedom bud Alright, so I've been trying for two days now, well this is day three, to show off the contents of my new battle box, Battle Box Mission 42, August 2018. Um, was going to be an unboxing video, but since I've already attempted this twice, it has been unboxed, and I know what the contents are, um, so it's not really as, as so much an unboxing as a, as a showing type of a video. Um, for those of you who've been following my channel, you'll know that back in May, around my birthday, my wife Mahoney subscribed me to a monthly mystery box uh, called Battle Box, which sends out um, survival and tactical products every month. And so I've been getting these, I think this is my fifth box. Oh, there we go. That's how I get rattlesnake calls. It does appear that there are two activities that I can undertake at any given moment to almost immediately prompt a rattlesnake call or a critter call in general. <laughs> One of those is if I try to like take a bath and wash the skunk smell off of me, I'm gonna get a call. It's almost guaranteed. Um, and then, of course, if I try to show off my most recent battle box contents. This is three days in a row now. My efforts have been thwarted. <laughs> I will prevail, though. I will prevail. And you know what? If you're going to get blocked in something, it's pretty cool to get blocked by a rattlesnake. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, this one is taking us down into the Paradise Canyon Golf Club. They have a snake already in a bucket waiting for me. I'm just going to move it into my transport case and bring it somewhere. <laughs> Where exactly? 
Uh, I'm not sure because this snake will be part of the population that belongs to the den sites that are really just, you know, that area is just being destroyed right now uh, with the development, with the new development, the extension of the canyons. So, not sure where I'm going to deposit this guy. Probably somewhere along the Cooley Rim past the development area. I am going down Monday into Lower Popson with a friend uh, who has been studying the snakes down there just privately for the last several years. And he's going to show me some of the sites he knows in the Lower Popson area that I might use as alternate drop sites um, in the future for some of the snakes coming out of this canyons, Paradise Canyons area. So let's go see who we got in the bucket. Hey. Oh, somebody's got some pictures to take. Yeah, we got a, got a rattlesnake here. Yeah. Oh, and you, it's you. Yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm a groundskeeper here, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's in the thing. Yeah. He's acting like he is not, not too happy to be in there. Yeah, I'll bring it out here. Oh, yeah. Oh, girl. Oh, just a little girl? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's tired of... <laughs> Go ahead. Kind of scouting out the scene of this rapidly changing Cooley Rim up here in the so-called canyons. And um, what it looks like from driving in with the damage thus far, looks like there's going to be development from that line of houses back in there all the way across this flat to this line of power poles um, so all of this area here is going to be uh, is being leveled off hey, it's being scraped almost all of it's already scraped they're going to leave a buffer you know for the coolie edge but it's not going to be huge you can see what the buffer is I can see what the buffer is you know from the other houses built on the coolie rim down that way out over here there's a bunch of you know the farmers still working wheat so I don't think that's going, you know, this year or next, probably. Um, but it's going to be up on the chopping block soon enough. They're going to continue that development all the way along this coolie rim to the entryway of Pops. And, you know, I've got the plans, so I know what they're, I know what the, what the vision is. And I don't want to think about it. <laughs> I don't want to think about, um, how much increased human and dog traffic out here there's going to be and uh you know the pressures on these snakes now i gotta say i'm not one that's pessimistic for the survival of these snakes these snakes have survived worse um you know they've survived 
150 years of persecution by the settler culture here and you know they've managed it even in places like Texas where they round them up every year <laughs> round up snakes and try to kill as many as possible even in that situation this, these rattlesnakes survive it's a real shame though because when I look at a rattlesnake what I think is really uh, interesting is the evolution of that rattle because in the current context with the current culture that rattle only serves to to signal humans that are likely going to end up killing the snake so as soon as the snake uses the rattle it's almost always a death sentence not not so much here in Lethbridge in southern Alberta where we're trying this coexistence but um, but in most other places in North America where there's rattlesnakes the the culture is just you know a good snake is a dead snake so I think it's very interesting that the rattle evolved here and I think it's because of the relationship that humans had with the snake where they respected it and didn't just kill it for for existing <laughs> and being you know and having venom um, so this is a species that really um, I think took its present form in that kind of context of that respectful relationship with us. So it, it bears on its body, I think, the uh, that history with us. And I think it's just a shame to uh, to not try to protect that that uh, that inheritance. That, um, that we have, uh, that we share with the snakes. Anyway, I'm, I'm probably rambling. So I'm out here looking at where I might do drops in the future. I'm thinking, you know, probably somewhere down here in Lower Popson, which as you remember over the winter was one of the sites I was looking at for Mandy. Mandy actually comes from down here, but I had the same dilemma going on. Do I release Mandy back in her home turf uh, here in, in Popson, where the human traffic is already fairly significant and it's going to increase hugely up here on the rim with all of this development and stuff. Do I release her here or do I release her at Cottonwood, where I know that at least for, for her lifetime, for the duration of her lifetime, it's not going to be a bunch of development going on over there. So I chose to leave her at Cottonwood and it only worked out, I think, because she had brumated with me at the house. So when I set her up at one of the dens there after brumation, she treated it like any other snake would and she stuck around uh, for that period where they wait before they head off to their summer haunts. So she's likely to come back to that den, I think. Um, I'm, I'm gonna be looking for that in the next, over the next few weeks. But in any case, you know, I can't move all the snakes from Popson over there. Uh, that's just too much crunch on the balance of of the ecology over there as well um, plus it would require a bunch of studies to be done on the carrying capacity there in order to legally move the snakes um, and I don't think fish and wildlife would probably approve that that removal of snakes anyway from here um, but I'm not, you know, like I say, I'm not pessimistic. I think the snakes are going to continue, but there's going to be casualties here. A bunch of casualties in the next year or two in this area. And then it'll start shifting this way. So let's get this snake out and uh, release her. I'm going to put her here at this badger hole that I've been using. It's pretty close to the construction, but, you know, if I put her way down there, I might mess her up. You know, I'm, all, I'm already off of the area where I should be letting her go. So I'll put her here and uh, hopefully she'll be alright.
there's the balance. Hey there. Can I get your picture? It's pretty. You ready to get out? Sure you are. Come on out. Hey there. Hey there. Camera. Oh, you're a pretty rattlesnake. Yes, you are. There you go.